Hi, it's John of Gentle Birch Millinery and welcome back to my channel. I say this in all my videos but thank you very much to my Patreon supporters. Um, I can't do this without you and your donations are very much welcome. For those that don't understand Patreon, click the link above and I have a video explaining all about Patreon and what it's about. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Look down below if it says subscribe, click the button and you'll be subscribed to the channel. If you've already subscribed, what I would suggest is hit that bell button and you'll be notified when we release videos in the future. And one final plug, if you are interested in workshops, head to my website, that will be linked above as well and in the description box below. And once I release the dates, you'll be notified when they go live. So enough of the shameless plugs, let's get into this video. Now first of all, I just want to say a video where I'm not wearing a hat. I know I've worn all my hats and I think I need to make myself something. Um, I'm showcasing my beautiful Lego man hair. How nice is this? It's actually getting cut tomorrow in time for my holiday, which is what this video is all about. We're approaching the end of August, going into September. Summer's nearly over. You're wanting to get that last minute holiday in, and you know, I'm quite lucky by the time this video goes up. Probably, I think it's going up on Saturday. Yeah, Saturday, I think. So. I'll be on a plane going to Grand Canaria to see some friends. I'm um, going away for someone's birthday. It's going to be carnage. I'm going to be hit myself though. I'm not going to get too drunk. But what do you need for a last minute holiday? I w I've been shopping and I've found very little summer wear. We're going into autumn. All the stores have got autumn in. And it was found it very hard to buy summer hats. So this is a quick and easy. Easy-ish. If you've never made a pattern before, it's, it's a bit. It can be a little bit complicated. But a quick and easy holiday visor that doesn't take a lot of time to sew. Um, if you're familiar with flat patterns, then you'll be able to do this in your sleep. And if you're not familiar with flat patterns, then we will talk you through how to make this visor. So enough of me talking. Let's get into this video. So for this tutorial, you are going to need the following: a minimum of half a meter of fabric ideally a lightweight cotton, some lightweight interfacing and some sew on press studs. The equipment that you're going to need are a crown block, some A4 paper, sellotape, ruler, a French curve and then finally a right angled protractor. We're going to make the pattern for the visor so draw around the block on a piece of A4 paper and cut this out. Fold in half lengthways and then across the width. Place this on the block and mark where the folds are. If you don't want to mark your block, you could always use your paper cut out, but putting a small mark won't hurt and it can be used again for further pattern templates. Lay the block on a fresh sheet of paper and line up your marks to the edge of the paper in the top corner. Basically, what you're trying to do is find a quarter of the head fitting so when aligned, draw around the block to give a nice curve. At the bottom of the curve, at the edge of the paper, this is where your centre front will be. So make several marks so you can see different lengths of the brim. We mark down three inches in one inch increments. Then, where the curve meets the top of the paper, draw a straight line down. So use a right angled protractor to ensure you get this line nice and correct. Draw your marks on the centre front line across to the line you have just drawn. This can get a little bit confusing so the video will probably explain it more than how I'm explaining it now. Freehand draw the ideal curve of your brim but don't worry too much about mistakes though as once you have the rough idea you'll use a French curve to match the line and give it a cleaner tighter curve. Cut this brim shape out. Mark some cut lines on the pattern from the bottom of the pattern to the top leaving around 5mm at the top. Make sure you space out your lines around 1.5cm to 2cm wide and cut along these lines making sure you don't cut all the way through the pattern. Once done, overlap each section by about half a centimetre which will give some curve at the head fitting and secure this with some sellotape. Take another piece of paper and fold it in half to make an A5 sized paper. Pin this pattern to the paper with the centre front on the fold. 
drawing your new shape once again using a French curve to smarten up any curves. Remove your original pattern and cut out to give you your riser pattern. We need to add seam allowances. So I like to draft my patterns with a seam allowance included. So take yet another piece of paper and tape your pattern down and go around the pattern, marking your ideal seam allowance. We used um, half an inch and join up all the dots to give you your final, final riser pattern. Now at this point, I actually did leave my original pattern on. Um, so then, because I'd already written on it, so it just made it a lot easier to use. Before you use your pattern though, make sure you mark on the pattern the bias, center front, any cutting instructions, and in this case, we need to cut two from fabric and two from interfacing. To make the headband pattern, take two pieces of A4 paper together. Measure the head the pattern is for, and I made this pattern to fit me, so my head measurement is 60 centimeters. So this is going to be 60 centimeters wide. We need to add some extra on for the overlap where the press studs are. So say two lots of five centimeters, that's 10 centimeters. So that's now 70 centimeters long. Then we need a seam allowance just at the end. So add another one centimeter at each end, bringing the total length to 72 centimeters. Divide this by two, which is 36 centimeters and measure out. 36 centimeters from the point where the two sheets of paper join. Do this at the top and the bottom of the paper and using a ruler, join these two points. You may need an additional couple of sheets of paper to do this on, so you might need four sheets of paper altogether. Um, because of the, obviously my head size, mine's a bigger size, um, I needed more paper. Ideally, you would use do this on a pattern paper, but not everybody has access to this or has this. So I just wanted to show you an easy way. Well, maybe not easy, but I wanted to show you a way of doing this that you can do at home. Then once you have got your length, you need to decide on your width. So we wanted a one inch width. So we needed to measure four inches wide, a bit like by a cinema. In fact, it's pretty much bias binding in, in effect. And once again, mark up this a few points and join it with a ruler, cut away any excess paper and you have your pattern made. So on this pattern, make sure you mark your bias, make sure you mark any cutting instructions, your center front. This will help you when you're pinning your pieces together later to make sure that it fits nice. Cut out two pieces of interfacing using the visor template and using an iron, attach these to the back of the fabric you are using and cut the pattern from the fabric, marking the centre front on both pieces. If you're using a full metre of fabric, your headband pattern will fit, so pin and cut out your fabric. If you only bought half a metre though, then fold the fabric in half, fold your headband pattern in half and lay the centre front on the bias. Pin and cut with an extra 0.5 centimeters on the end as a seam allowance to join the two pieces of fabric together. If you cut a full strip of fabric, find the center front and mark on the reverse. If not, you will need to sew your fabric together on the seam allowance to fold this open on the allowance and iron this flat. Then you need to sew your visor parts together with the right sides together and cut away any excess seam allowance, turning right side out and press this. So we're going to work on the headband and this is pretty much a bias strip. So bring the fabric together from the top to the bottom and press the crease using an iron. Open this up, bring the top and bottom to the new crease line and press again. And then finally, bring the top to the bottom of the fabric and give it a final press. And this will be pretty much a bias strip of fabric. Join the visor to the headband, making sure you start with your center front points, then the end points of the visor, which means you'll need to ease the visor into the headband and pin this into place. Then sew the whole length of the headband, which will close the headband and also join it to the visor. 
Finally, mark the positioning of the sewing press studs and sew these down securely. Alternatively, you could use Velcro here or attach some rib um, ribbon, for example. And there she is. Now, this was one the one we showed you in the tutorial. We also made a different one here. Um, obviously, they are pinned to the back of the head because, well, they're made for my head size, not mannequin head size. And with this one, we actually made the headband an inch wide, um, so it's it's not as prominent on this one as it is on this one. And obviously, you can change the size of the brim, so you can make it shorter, you can make it longer. The one I'm wearing is a mixture of this headband with a very shorter, slightly more masculine brim and it is more flat along the front as opposed to curved which you see on these two. And if you follow me on Instagram, so if you're not on Instagram you need to join Instagram so you can follow me, you may see me making the boys that are going on holiday wearing these. I'm not too sure they would wear this one. They might wear this one. I'm wearing this one. Let's see. We'll see. So make sure you follow me on all my social media. So we have we have Facebook, we have Instagram, we have Twitter, we have Snapchat, and we also have Patreon as well. All the links to these will be in the description box and they'll be listed at the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next week where we are doing Miller Showcase with a slight twist, mainly because I'm having to record everything this week and I don't have time to do it while I'm on holiday and I'm on holiday so I shouldn't be doing it. So we're going to do a little sneaky twist for next week. We're approaching the end of summer, we're coming to the end of August, going into September and I don't know where I was going with that.